Dear student, today I am going to discuss a very very important topic, the most important topic of atomic structure that is Bohr's atomic model or Bohr's postulate. Before Bohr's, we have studied about the J.J. Thomson atomic model, Rutherford atomic model and their demerits. Now today we are going to discuss a new topic that is and very important that is Bohr's atomic model and Bohr's postulate. Why Bohr's postulate is very important? Reason 1. Because Bohr's postulate you will get in class 11th also and in class 11th you will get in physics also in chemistry also and of course it is in 9th. So that is why it is very important. Second thing, Bohr's atomic model is much much better than the J.J. Thomson atomic model and Rutherford atomic model. That is why it is very important and so many questions and so many derivations came from here. So many formulas we have uh, originated from here actually. That is why it is very important. So in if you reach to class 11th or if you are very competitive in class 9, that time this Bohr's model is very important and they will surely ask the question from Bohr's atomic model if you are preparing for the Olympiad, NTSE and so many competitive exams. And if you are talking about the school exam then yes that time also Bohr's model is important because till 9th class Bohr's model only we study, after that we do not study. But if we talk about the competition or in class 11 then we study wave mechanical model also. Okay. Let us start with the Bohr's postulate means what are the things Bohr is saying and uh, what are the important points in Bohr, how he introduces the atomic model, let us see that. Point 1, he saying that my atomic model is only applicable for uni electronic species, uni means 1, electronic means electron species okay, like hydrogen, how many electron hydrogen has? 1 ok, hydrogen. Then suppose I am writing Li plus 2, how many electron? 2 sorry 1, in the beginning it had 3 ok, 2 electrons removed so 1 electron left. So uh, this uh, postulate Bohr's atomic model is only applicable for uni electronic species means a species which has only 1 electron only in that case this theory is applicable. Okay, what are the points in the theory? Bohr is saying that my orbit is circular, my orbit is circular in which electron is revolving without radiating energy, without emitting energy. But in Rutherford it was emitting energy, that is why that is that is why it is a drawback. Now Bohr is saying that my electron is revolving in circular path without losing any energy, without radiating energy, without emitting energy. Okay, so, it will not hit the nucleus. Okay. Now, what are the other points he is saying? See, you know very well that if this is nucleus, this is the first orbit, second orbit, third orbit, fourth orbit, fifth orbit like that. Okay. This is K, L, M, N, O, P, U, R like that. Okay. This is orbit number 1, orbit number 2 orbit number 3, orbit number 4, orbit number 5. We know that electrons revolve in the circular orbit. Okay. So, this is the part, small parts of the orbit. Okay. Now, Niels Bohr is saying that in one orbit, how many electrons can leave? We can calculate with the formula 2n square. Number of electrons in n orbit, I should say maximum number of electrons equal to 2 n square, okay. Means if I talk about the k, means first orbit, then how many, means how many maximum number of electrons can leave there, that is, that can be calculated by the formula 2 n square. So, 2 into for n equal to 1 that is 2 into 1 square that is 2. It means Bohr is saying that in very first orbit only 2 electrons can live that is it. Okay, Let us talk about the second for n equal to 2, 2 into 2 square. Okay. So, 
2 square means 4, 4 2 is 8. So, tell me how many maximum number of electrons can leave in second orbit that is 8, okay, n equal to 3. So, 3 square 9 into 2, 18. So, in third orbit maximum number of electrons can leave that is 18, 19 electrons cannot leave there. 17 electrons can leave no problem, 1 electron can leave no problem, 14 electrons can leave no problem, but more than 18 electrons can't leave in the third orbit, okay. So, this is how he is telling slowly, slowly all the important points about his atomic model. Dear student, now I am going to display a slide which will give you information. See the first point, Bohr's atomic model. Bohr's model is applied only on one electron species. As I told you, it is only applicable for uni electronic species like hydrogen, He plus, Li plus, Be plus 3 and etc. And yes, I explained it before. Now I will display you the next slide which already I explained. See, the next point is electron revolves around the nucleus in a fixed circular orbit. I told you that Bohr is saying that my electron is not radiating, not emitting any energy while revolving in my circular orbit. Because this was not the condition in Rutherford atomic model and this is what he improved in his atomic model. That his electron is not hitting the nucleus, his electron is not emitting any energy while revolving and it is revolving in a stationary orbit. Okay? Now read the point. Electron revolves around the nucleus in a fixed circular orbit of definite energy. As long as the electron occupy a definite energy level, it does not radiate out energy. I told you, it does not radiate. That is, it does not lose or gain energy. These orbits are called stationary orbits. So, what is a stationary orbit? Such kind of orbit in which electron will revolve without losing the energy or without gaining the energy. That type of orbit is called stationary orbit and Bohr's orbit is a stationary orbit. Now, I will display you one next, yes, here you can see a new term. Let me explain you first, then I will tell you. You must remember the momentum part. Momentum two types, one is linear momentum and other is angular momentum, okay. So, if you remember the linear momentum that was mv. But here is not linear momentum, here it is angular momentum and angular momentum formula is MVR, angular momentum formula is MVR. So, here understand what the Bohr has given its condition. He is saying that MVR must be equal to NH by 2 pi, where N is integer actually. You have to remember MVR equal to NH by 2 pi. H is Planck's constant, 2 already constant, pi already constant, 22 by 7 or 3.14, okay. So, MVR equal to NH by 2 pi. This should be the condition. Let me tell you what is this. See, what happens? There are infinite orbits in any atom. Whether it is hydrogen or sodium or small atom or big atom all the atom contains infinite number of orbits. It does not mean that hydrogen contains only one orbit and sodium contains 13 orbit 12 orbit. It is not like that. All the atoms contains infinite number of orbit, but yes, in very selected circular orbits, in very selected circular orbits, electron will leave, electron will revolve, electron will circulate there. So, how to select in infinite orbit, how to select that their electron will leave and their electrons will not leave? This is the criteria. Such orbit in which MVR equals to NH by 2 pi, only in that orbit electron leaves, not in all the orbits. Okay? Now, detailed discussion of this part MVR equal to NH by 2 pi is in senior class, is in higher class. Here, we should know the formula only, that is it. So, let me tell you, H is Planck's constant which is 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to minus 24 as I taught you in the Planck's quantum theory also and this full term is constant. But n is variable, n will change and n is orbit number. What is n? n is orbit number. MVR is what? Angular momentum. So, what should be the angular momentum? Tell me. Angular momentum must be NH by 2 pi. Then only electron will revolve in that particular orbit. 
okay so this is the condition now you can read the text electron revolves only in those orbits whose angular momentum is an integral multiple of the factor h by 2 pi okay one more thing in few books what they do this h by 2 pi they write h cross so in few books you can find h by 2 pi equal to h cross in that way mvr equal to n h cross right okay now i will give you one more slide as i discussed the first orbit the very first orbit will be k or 1 you can say then l m n and you can continue with o p no problem okay now and uh, m v and r you can see so r is the radius okay i will explain the radius and i will teach separately what the radius is how to define the radius how to calculate the radius and we will do some numerical also no problem r is radius okay now v v is the velocity of electron with which velocity how much velocity it has to move in the circular orbit that velocity is v and m is the mass of electron it is very simple okay so m v are equal to nh by 2 pi now i will give you next slide to give more information okay now this slide you will understand before that you try to see this figure this is a i request you to see the last figure the last slide figure last flash slide figure was like this 1 2 3 4 like that okay suppose electron is leaving in first orbit suppose electron is in first orbit what happens if this electron will get some energy if i supply energy to this to this electron in this orbit then what happens then electron will jump from one orbit to higher orbit i am not saying it will jump from one to second orbit no it's not necessary electron can jump from one to two one to three one to four one to infinity also no problem okay and once electron will jump from one orbit to other orbit so the question is electron absorbed energy or released energy so electrons absorbed the energy okay now second thing now it came to the higher orbit like suppose electron is in the fourth orbit okay what happens when electron reaches to the higher energy level means higher orbit then at that moment it is very unstable and it wants to return back so to come back once again what happens these electrons will jump and that time it will lose energy so when electron moves from higher orbit to lower orbit it will lose energy it will release energy when orbit jump from lower energy to higher energy means lower orbit to higher orbit that time it will absorb energy and this is what i want to say here with the text you can read the energy is emitted or absorbed only when electron jumps from one energy level to other energy level what is energy level so bohr's orbit is also known as energy level bohr's orbit like first orbit second orbit third orbit they are known as stationary orbit they are known as energy level like that it may jump from high to low or low to high I told you when emission of energy takes place. Emission takes place when electron jump from high to low. Okay, absorption of energy takes place when electron jump from low to high. Okay. So here we studied the important points about the Bohr's atomic model, its postulate. Thank you.